Hi, I'm Paul Brody. This is my shop. The man behind the camera is Mitch, and I'd like to say welcome. Last week we did a frame drawing of a Romax. I'm going to make myself a Romax. It's been a long time since I did that. Up on my bench here I have a couple frame jigs and I want to, I want to talk really uh, uh, briefly about them. This one was made in 1985 and it's done a lot of frames. It's done over, over 4,000 frames and it's still going. I was teaching Frame Building 101 and this was the only frame jig we had, so I made another uh, frame jig. I made this one in 2015, so it's, it's uh, uh, three decades apart and they look a lot the same, but you'll notice that my new one is longer because frames have become a lot longer. The front center has become longer. That's the main difference. On the first part of the frame, we're going to work on the bottom bracket shell. And I've got one here, I've got a hole, and I've got a couple other little holes. I'll explain that. This one here is a, it's a Ritchie bottom bracket. So the first thing we're going to do is to make a hole. I have two holes here. This one is for the, it's for the down tube. If there's any, 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 any moisture that gets in through the water bottle bosses or something like that, it lets it out. And these two holes are for the seat tube, because if you get water down into your seat tube, it has to go somewhere, because otherwise the water will sit in the bottom and it'll rust out the holes. So let's go over to the mill. We're going to make a hole. We're going to center the hole saw. We're going to put a hole in there for the down tube. And then on the, on the drill press, we'll drill two quarter inch holes for the seat tube. Let's go. I got a seven eighths hole saw here, because that's the size this is. I could go inch, but seven eighths is a little bit safer, because the down tube is inch and a quarter. There we go. I'm just going to go right through with a center drill. You're not really supposed to do that, but, but I just did. I have a down tube. It's, it's tangy. It's prestige. Very nice. It took me a while to find this. And now I need to know where, where the butts are inside. So there's going to be a long butt and there's going to be a short butt. That's usually what's what happens and then in in the middle is the thin section and the tapered sections. That's the inside of the tube. I have a butt detector. It's even labeled as a butt detector. What this does, I hold it in the vise and then it's got a dial indicator here. When that needle goes down, that's the end of the butt. See that? See right there? That's the end of the butt. So that's where I make my mark, right there. Then I do the other side. It's going to be interesting to see if the butts are the same or one's longer. Oh, see that? Ooh. Definitely shorter. So it'll go down. And then that's, that's where the, uh, at the, at the straight section starts, right there. So you come along on the straight section, there's the taper, that's the taper happening, and then that's the butt. So the butt ends right, right there. Obviously this goes down onto the bottom bracket and this goes up to the head too because there's a lot more force up by the head tube. When you hit an object or you bounce off a curb, this is taking more shock. So the longer section I always put up to the head tube. So we're going to miter this now. We're going to miter this inch and a half. And then that's where the bottom bracket goes on. When we were building frames, this piece here was always on the mill. When you put a, a tube in here, when you see an equal space underneath, you know that the tube is level because you could easily hold it like that or you could hold it like that and, and not know that it's not level. So what we do then is, is to put spaces under there like that. And now if you look, 
that air gap should be level. I go through nice and slow, and then it won't leave a little bump on the very bottom. Always use a pair of pliers. It's, it's such a temptation to want to use your fingers, and then you cut yourself. I know, because I've done it. Do you see how shiny that is? I can braise over that, but I think it's way better if I put a cross hatch on there. So this has been made with an old, an old motorcycle disc brake or rotor. And this piece of angle iron got welded onto the bottom. And what this does, you put the bottom bracket on there. This is also 68 millimeters. So you center it with your finger, fingers. And then you put the tube on like that. And then you center it. Now this here is a little, little guide to save time. Don't have to use a vernier or anything like that. And what this does, it holds the tube in place for when you, when you tack it. So down here, you see where the holes are? You need a little, little, little bit of a gap there. What have I got? A couple millimeters there. I'm talking metric to you now. I got a couple millimeters on each side. I have to take this off. I have to flux it because I can't flux in the back. And then I can get a nickel silver tack, nickel silver tack. Then I'll put it into the park stand and I'll nickel silver around. This is that blue, uh, it's type B paste flux from the El Raya Gas Company in El Raya, Ohio. It's good stuff. A lot of frame builders use this. If this is the cone of the flame, if I hold the cone right there, it heats up the bottom bracket and the down tube at the same time, and then I put a little tack there. That's where I want the cone to be. I don't need to do a big preheat back and forth. Just right there. That's the right, that's the right spot. This is the first step of building a frame. There we go, so we got a little tiny tack there. Maybe not super tiny, but... So I flip it round, and I do the same thing here. There we go. Yeah, bottom bracket took a little longer that time. Put more heat on the bottom bracket, it's a little thicker tube. So I've got the torch maybe oh, half inch away, maybe 12 millimeters. And I'm aiming the heat a little bit more at the bottom bracket because it's easy to overheat the tube. There we go, so we'll just let that cool down. We're at the frame drawing now, and this is gonna be the seat tube extension. This is what we use. This is a piece of, of chromoly, it's 4130. It's pretty thick wall. It's got some weight to it. It's 095 wall, but it gets machined down. This is where that goes. So we've got a, a two inch segment here. We've got a three quarter inch segment up there. And so we, we need to go to the lathe now we're going to machine this out. It's nine, nine, six. That means that one end is 0.9 millimeters and then it tapers and then it's 0.6. That's how all seat tubes used to be. Then in the nineties, we got the bulge butt seat tubes where it had the bulge out here, it was an external butt and you didn't have to add the extension anymore. That was a big, a big plus for the frame builders. So let's have a look and see where this butt is. Can you see how the needle goes down? Right there, that's where the butt ends. We'll check the other end because it probably doesn't have any butt at all. 
See, that's perfectly straight. I could take off a little bit more of the butt because then I would save a little bit of weight on the frame. So maybe I'll do that. I'm gonna make a hacksaw mark right here. And this hacksaw cut is gonna be right there. So I'm marking it right about there because this tube is gonna go into the seat extension about a quarter of an inch. So let's go make a couple cuts. Let's go to lathe. I'm gonna face this end because that's gonna go into the seat tube extension. We want that to be perfectly flat, not at an angle from a hacksaw. So this is the seat tube extension. Got a boring bar here. So we're at minus, oh, minus one. So this should fit now. Let's see what happens. There we go. And that's good, because look, it's got a little bit of play. If it's too tight, it's hard for the nickel silver to flow. So you can, you can tell there's a little bit of play. I'm gonna call that good. So if I was just to hold this in the vise and put that in, it could end up at an angle because see I've got movement. So this is what we used to do. This is, this is what holds everything in place. So I've got my, my little, little drill press vise and then this slides down over top. So it's, it's got a little bit of play, but you know. So we need some flux. I want to make sure the flux goes inside. There we go. So that's seating all the way down. A little bit of flux everywhere. So what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll put a few little tacks around it. If I just tack it on one side and start to braise, it's going to pull. So it'll be less obviously of the pull if I tack it in three spots and then braise around. I've got a fairly hot flame here. Let's see if it's too hot. Oh, can you see that? It went, it went in. That's tacked. So it's good to have this warm because the nickel silver has to go down one quarter of an inch. And that's capillary action. That's when the heat is pulling the filler material in. That's how lugs work. There we go. We're done. I've soaked off the flux. So now you can really see all the nickel silvering. It's fairly smooth. So I've got my fancy alignment gauge. We're going to check and see how true the down tube is off the sides of the bottom bracket now. So what I'm doing is here, I've got one hand on the alignment tool and the other hand is on the other side of the bottom bracket. And so I'm putting on pressure and we'll get it. There we go, we're very, very close. So we flip it over. Okay, so it's out a little bit. So we need to pull it, it's gonna be pulled and this is pretty normal because you're putting heat on one side, then on the other side. I've got my bottom bracket cuts. These are fixed cups from years ago and all the threads have been ground off. So just give it a little bit of a pull. You can see the tube flex. So we've got a little gap there. And we've got a little gap there. So there we go. That was one pull and that's close enough. So it didn't take huge amount of effort. It just took a little bit of a pull. So what we have to do now, I'll, I'll grab the head tube, inch head tube, inch and a quarter down tube. Can you see how they're basically, the head tube is a touch larger. So if you fillet braze that, that means there's almost no material there. 
So this has to get ovalized this way. I've got this held in the arbor press now. It's the weight of the arm that's holding everything. So what I want to do is to make sure I got the bottom bracket vertical. So see, I've got an alloy plate here and I've got an alloy plate here. So if I eyeball this, I can see it's out a little bit. So if I hold my hands like that, there we go. That's my eyechrometer I'm using. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so here we go. We're going to ovalize it. And you can see it come, it springs back. That's because it's 4130 and it's got memory. It definitely is a tough metal. A little more, there we go. Arbor press is very handy for frame builders. So there we go, it's ovalized. It's, a, it, it's very nice, there's no, no steps, no transition. Oh, well, very smooth, smooth transition. Let's look at the head tube now. So there we go, we've got an eighth of an inch on each side. And if, if you wanna take out a little bit of the ovalization, we don't have to have quite that much. And you give it a little squish and, and the memory will help it to come back. There we go, I just opened it up a very tiny amount. So there we go, there's our eighth of an inch on each side. That's perfect for fillet brazing. I've got the, the bottom bracket and the down tube on the drawing. You see how I've got the combination square right in the corner? And then I press down. That's where I miter. And that's as accurate as I can get because I'm going, oops, yeah. I'm going off the drawing. So we've got the angle set. It's 23.5 degrees. We'll go to the mill, we'll set the angle up, and then the whole saw is going to get edged up to that line. Remember this level piece here? This is where the bottom bracket sits on. It's what holds the bottom bracket perpendicular to the miter at the other end. So I can loosen this because it's there we go. So now it's down. And it also happens to be spaced just right. That's how this was designed. So that when you put a frame, a, a down tube and a bottom bracket on here, it's holding it perpendicular to the mitre. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm gonna check and see if the seat tube is bent because it's being brazed halfway. So that's the low spot right there. So we'll make a mark. And then that's the high, that's the, well, it didn't stay on the zero. That's the high point. So when I overlize this, I'm gonna overlize it this way and it's going to be this is going to be on the top or the bottom it doesn't matter you can overlize it well that's a pretty strong tube you can feel it it's only 0.9 millimeters but there we go i like that so we squish that because it's it it widens the tube a little bit at the bottom bracket makes it a little easier for the fillet brazing so we're matching up there, and then we're gonna mitre right about to there. If the seat tube's a millimeter longer or shorter, it's really not here or there. How do you mark the middle of a tube? Well, if I make some assumptions that the floor is level, the, vice, the, the workbench is level, the vice is level, then if I hold a ruler level, hold it at a 45, that is the center of the tube. So if I take a felt pen, I don't know if you can, can you see that mark? It's just a little scra scrape. But if I mark it like that, so I've got a felt pen mark, I've got an extrusion here, nothing fancy. 
If I put that on like that and I line it up, there you go, I just found the middle of the tube. It wasn't rocket science at all. What I'm doing this for is to mark where the water bottle bosses go. So the seven inches is right there. And then we want 2.5 inches. Yeah. Do you see how it indented just a little bit? I forced the tubing in. That helps the center drill to start. We have the frame jig here. I'm going to take some measurements off the drawing and we're going to set up the frame jig, frame jig for this particular bike, this Romax. Every frame builder has a different jig sometimes. I made all my own years ago. So if I loosen that, I can slide this. That is the front center and then this is my head tube angle. So if I lock this a bit it'll hold it so this is metric here i'm gonna measure what the front center is 665 millimeters we'll set up the jig for that 62 64 66 so 665 is going to be right right about there so i'll lock that a little bit then we set this to 70.5. That looks good there. This is the drop. We got all the measurements there. There's my drop. It's, uh, it's a little over four. It's a little bit over there, right there. And then the seat tube angle, 74. So on the fork, we went axle the crown. Then we added in the stack height, which is the lower headset. Now we need to measure from the axle up to the head tube. We're at 407. That's what it looks like to me. That's your axle right there. And we need to go 407. And that's where the head tube goes to, right there. So this has to come down. That looks good, 407, I can see 407 there. So that'll work. I've got a head tube, we have to cut the head tube to the same size as the drawing. And the hacksaw and then face it in the lathe. Then we put on the bottom bracket and the down tube and you see how it fits. Sometimes you have to move the jig around a little bit. Not bad, not bad for first try. So what we need is a quarter inch gap at the bottom. So we have to move the jig back just a touch. Move it back maybe a millimeter. There we go. And that's a pretty good fit there. It's not much in the way of gap there. I could take a file and I could fine tune it just a little bit, but that's not bad at all for a first fit. What I need to do now is to, is to file. I need to notch the seat tube. If I was doing a run of 10 frames, I'd set it up in the milling machine, but for one, I'm just gonna file it by hand because it doesn't take that long. So you can see how the miter at the back, there's a big gap. What we want to do is to file that so that that comes in and it sits right on top and there's no gap on the front. Let's see if we can accomplish that. So I think we're basically good. So here we are, Here's, this is the length of the top tube. 
And what I like to have is longer butt here than here. It looks like that's what suits me right there. So up by the head tube, we're gonna have a butt this long and you can see how this one is shorter. So I'm gonna make a mark here. That's my hacksaw mark. There you go. H for hacksaw, M for mitre. And then we'll figure out this. We'll, we'll have to cut a little bit off of this end. So first of all, hacksaw and mitre, and the mitre is at one degree. So we mitered at an angle of, of one degree, so... So that's not right. See, see this, this end of the top tube needs to end up in the middle. So we'll flip it over. And it still doesn't look quite right. It needs to come up. So let's change the angle of the mitre, make it, make it two degrees, I think. Move it in a couple thou, we'll take a very, very small skim cut. Okay, so look at that, it's right in the middle now. So that's good. This little holder here, it puts the top tube in the right position because something has to hold it up. So there we go, that's what I want. Maybe a touch higher, just a little bit higher because we want a space there of one quarter inch. Okay, now I'm gonna mark this tube off the drawing. So what I'm doing is I, I place it on the drawing like that. I put this into the mitre and I line it up with the head tube. That looks good. And then I set this up in the corner like that. And then I make a mark. And that's my mitre mark. And that looks good. So I need to just do a bit of sanding around all the places that need to be brazed. And then we can tack it up. So I have a sequence here. I always, I tack here. So one, two, three, four underneath, five and six. That's what I do. And there's a reason for that. I will explain shortly, probably next week. So we line up the bottom bracket and the head tube. So there we go, it's lined up. And then what you wanna do is to go around the other side and you look at the seat tube. If the seat tube is lined up with the drawing, then that's good. And I can tell from right now that it looks pretty accurate. I'm happy with that. If the bottom bracket's lined up in the head tube, that's what you're looking at. And I think we've done fine. That's all we have for right now. Our time has run out. Thanks for joining us. Next week, we'll be doing fillet brazing, filing, brazons, alignment, all that. So hope you, hope you can make it. Thank you, stay safe, have a good week.